We've just seen how Ajax.beginform works, although we haven't really seen how it works behind the scenes. I think it's interesting to take a look at what is happening there because we'll see some interesting techniques we can apply to our own JavaScript code. There are basically three features MVC provides out of the box that we would consider Ajax related. There is Ajax.beginform, which we just used, and there's also an Ajax.action link. Just like Ajax.beginform, Ajax.action link creates a link to make an asynchronous request and update the screen instead of navigating the browser to a new page. The third MVC feature is client-side validation. All of these features use an approach to JavaScript programming that is known as unobtrusive JavaScript. Unobtrusive JavaScript means we don't have JavaScript littered throughout the view in on-click events. That's obtrusive to other developers who try to read the code. And it's also obtrusive to users because it usually means the content is only available if they have JavaScript enabled. If I were to remove the scripts from this page or turn off JavaScript and IE, the home page would continue to work and the search would continue to work. It just wouldn't be nice and asynchronous, but it would continue to work. And this is because of the way the scripts interact with the page. If we look at the source code, we'll get an idea of how begin form works. The Ajax begin form helper emits data dash attributes into the form tag. Data dash attributes are part of the HTML5 specification, and you are allowed to invent as many different data dash attributes as you want. They're basically private data for the application to consume. The browser ignores them. Then in scripts that you load on the page, there will be some JavaScript that will go and interpret those data dash attributes and start attaching events or doing whatever is necessary to add Ajax features, whatever the data dash Ajax instructions tell them to do. Client side validation works the same way. Let's close this view and go out to a review edit page and look at the source code to this. And here you can see data dash attributes that specify all the validation rules for rating. They're on the input for the rating value. They include things like the minimum value, the maximum value, and the error message to show if something is out of range. So there's JavaScript code coming through, finding these data dash attributes, interpreting the values inside, and then adding behavior to the page. It all still works if JavaScript is disabled. We won't have client side validation, but nothing will break. The data dash attributes will go unused, but the form will still post and we'll have server-side validation. Let me show you how easy it would be to come into the index controller and instead of using ajax.beginform, we'll go back to our simpler form and implement this using just our own JavaScript code with some jQuery. I will add some additional information to this opening form tag. So it's still method equals get, now I'm going to explicitly specify an action to make sure this form has an action attribute. I'm using the URL helper to generate a URL to a controller action, in this case, the home controller index action, and then two data dash attributes, one to identify that this form should be Ajaxy, it should behave asynchronously, and one to ID the DOM element that needs to be updated when data comes back from the form submission. Very similar to what we had in the Ajax options that we had to pass into the begin form helper. And I'm using a bit of a prefix in here, OTF, just so my data dash attributes don't conflict with any data dash attributes defined by the MVC framework. And now we will need a script to interpret these data dash attributes. Let me come in to the scripts folder and add a new item. We'll search the installed templates for script, find JavaScript file, and let's just call it OTF.js. This will be a JavaScript file that we use throughout the application. So not just on the home page, and I can have these asynchronous forms anywhere. For this to work everywhere, we will have to add it to our bundle that is rendered on the layout page. So I'll just add this new script down here at the bottom. It's going to depend on jQuery, so it has to come after jQuery, but right there should be fine. It will now be everywhere in the application. And now let's add some code to the script. The first thing we'll do is use jQuery to hook up to the DOM ready event. If you haven't used jQuery before, this is when you just invoke the jQuery function, which is the dollar sign, and then pass in a function. That tells jQuery that you want to execute some code when the DOM is ready. That's the point when all the HTML has been received, it's been parsed by the browser, it's been put into memory in the document object model, or the DOM, so all the elements are in memory, they're ready to be scripted. Then we can use a jQuery selector to go out and find all the forms that have this data attribute present and set to the value true. 
Another great feature of jQuery is that it lets you use CSS selector syntax like this to select elements on a page. This would select one form element or zero form elements or multiple form elements, just as however many have the data-otf.ajax attribute set to true inside them. And then the third feature of jQuery is that it's very easy to wire up events. So once I have selected zero or more form elements, I want to wire up the submit event so that when the user clicks a save button or a submit button, instead of that posting back to the server, instead of that going back to the server, it will come into my JavaScript code. In this case, call a function Ajax form submit. We haven't written that function yet, but it's just a normal function that you can write in JavaScript. Inside of this function, it's going to be our responsibility to handle this form submission. So we'll have to collect all the parameters, send them off to the server, get the result back from the server, and then graft it into the page somewhere. So the first thing I'll do is grab a reference to the form that is being submitted. You can do that because it will be the this reference inside of the event handler, and then I'm just going to wrap it inside of jQuery so that I can use jQuery functions on that element. I want to use those functions to build an options object that will contain the URL that we're going to go to. I can get that by looking at the action attribute that is on that form. The type of request to make, that would be a get or a post, and we can get that from the method attribute on the form. And finally, the data to send along to the server. Whatever inputs are in that form, we need to collect them all up into name value pairs and post them. In the case of a search, that will just contain the search term, but there could be additional data in there too. And then once we have the options together, it's time to make the asynchronous call. There's a number of different ways to make asynchronous calls back to the server with jQuery. One is with $.ajax. That's the one that gives you the most flexibility and the most options. Here I can just pass the options object in. That will tell jQuery where to call, the URL, and also the data to pass along and whether to do a get or a post. And then when it is done, this is a callback function. When that request is complete and successful, this function will be invoked and the response from the server will be in this data object. What I'll need to do inside of this callback is go out and find the target, that is, what is the DOM element on the page that I wanted to update with this data? So we will go out and find that by digging the identifier out of the data dash attribute, and then using the jQuery HTML method, or rather, what we could do is use the replace method. We could say, replace that target with this hunk of HTML that we got back from the server. That will update the page. And then one last touch inside of Ajax form submit, we need to prevent the browser from doing its default action, which is navigating away and going to the server by itself and redrawing the page. I can do that just by returning false down here. And with all this code in place, I should be able to do a build and run the application. Now we'll be performing the same actions as Ajax.begin form, but we'll be doing it with our own code. So it's a little more open to customization and flexibility. I should be able to search. And I get a JavaScript error, which happens occasionally. I picked the wrong method to update the screen with. Let's try replace with. So replace this element with what is inside of this data. Save everything again. Let's refresh the page. And scroll down a little bit and try the search again. And now we're working just fine. And now we have some code to build on that we can customize for our application using data dash attributes. And we could have this code make a loading message visible or log errors to do all sorts of interesting things that the application needs.